Welcome to the first video for the new YouTube channel, Grumpy Young Guy Reviews. The grumpy guy, that's me. Um, today we're going to be looking at CarPlay and see if it's actually a worthwhile option, especially when it comes to navigation, when it comes to music. Um, and today we have a, a Leaf 2, 40 kilowatt hour, and we're going to be looking at how does the Nissan navigation really compare to the navigations that are available through CarPlay on iPhone 7 we've got. And we're also going to be looking at in terms of music. So I personally use Spotify. So we're going to be looking at how that well that integrates in with CarPlay. So let's start off with uh, flipping it around and then we'll have a look what's good, what's bad and what really could be improved on. Okay then, so as we start, we've got a genuine iPhone lead. And this is the first thing that annoys me. We've got the ability, of course, to do wireless CarPlay. So that's present in some of the new Audis. Yet we still have to use the rather annoying and usually too long lead. Um, so that's 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 not a great one there. So we start off with, we're all connected in. You can see we've got an UX jack in. Um, and then we've also got your standard USB. So genuine lead there and just a little magnetic case. So let's kind of, um, let's have a look how it really pans out when we do it with CarPlay. So we'll just turn the ignition on. Now, I think one thing to notice on this is I found that when connecting via music, um, so I've got off Spotify. I mean, you think the idea of CarPlay is that I don't have to touch the phone at all. Um, I can literally get rid of the phone completely and I can just um, go from there. So one thing you'll notice about it straight away is that the Bluetooth connects really, really quickly. So I can see here that Bluetooth is connected and playing before CarPlay actually kicks in. And there we go, we've got CarPlay and it's activated. Sometimes that can take a little bit longer. That one was actually quite quick. And this one's got a, this Nissan has got a really weird bug in it where you would then have to press play here to connect it. It's, um, it, it's, it's annoying. So you, the, it connects to CarPlay and then, but it will pause it and you always have to press go from there. So let's have a quick look at the CarPlay then. So the phone's connected and it's not, nothing's in use. Um, so let's have a quick look at CarPlay. So down the side here, we've got Spotify, we've got Maps, we've got text messages, the phone signal and everything like that. And then we've got our sort of home button that we'd have from there. Now, one thing I would say with this is I've got a lot of navigation maps on my phone. I've got Google Maps, I've got Apple Maps, I've got Waze, and I've got TomTom Tom Go, which is the newer mobile app for it. And actually, I've got loads of apps on my phone, and the only ones that actually show are these ones. So, the biggest problem where the phone is an iPhone 7 running iOS 11, and I'll just turn that down a little bit. So, it's running iOS 11, and unfortunately, Apple, in their greatest wisdom with iOS 11, only allow Apple Maps. You can't use Google Maps, Waze, Sigic, or any of the other navigation ones there. So, let's just look at Spotify to begin with. Now, one thing I will say, and it really annoys me, is that if Spotify isn't running on the phone, it often will take multiple attempts at this button to get it to activate. You'd think that it would just automatically, this be the phone, um, but it just kind of really isn't the case. It, it, this, this connection isn't anywhere near as good as you expect. So WhatsApp good because it will read your text messages out and the same with messages, um, and then the same with phone as well. So this button as well is for Siri. So if you press it down, it will work like Siri. I'm not sure I... And of course you can cancel it. So let's just look, go into Spotify. So you can see there. So the album artwork is in the background, but it's not that clear, uh, which, yeah, I mean, like you say, you shouldn't really be looking at it anyway, but um, it's just one of the things on there. Now. One thing I will say with this is I've got my library on there, playlists, which I generally set up and I use with Spotify, and I've got all of my playlists here. Um, this is a little bit hit and miss. The interface is not so great. So often I'll press um, this here, and you see it didn't work then. And you'll press that, and instead of just going to the playlist like it did just, all it will do is it'll just have a little disc spinning around and do absolutely nothing. So 
yes, one of the big advantages here, I can navigate through my playlists um, and then I can play something with Ed Sheeran. Um, and you can see there that it comes into the background. So it it's not too bad. Um, I, I kind of expected more. I expected it to work as seamlessly as it does on the phone, which kind of isn't the case. It's annoying that it, the Bluetooth boots up first, it then starts playing, then stops it, then launches CarPlay. It's quite surprising that the Bluetooth launches, so it, it launches quicker in wireless than it does through a, a solid iPhone cable. So let's have a quick look at Apple Maps. So you can see here that and the, the biggest thing I found with this is A, I don't like Apple Maps. I don't think it's particularly good. The navigation isn't great, the turn by turn by directions aren't great. <coughs> and if, the general graphics aren't that good either. But now if I wanted to navigate somewhere, I have to press on the screen. I have to go to destinations. And here I think, right, I, where's the, you know, where are the, um, where's the keyboard? So to get to the keyboard, you have to press the microphone button where would you then like click, to go? Then click this keyboard and then you can start typing in. So there's about three or four different clicks before you can actually get there. Of course, you can say it by Siri, but so far my luck with announcing postcodes to Siri is a big fat 0%. It just doesn't work. I'm really looking forward to having Google, um, Google Maps on there ideally. But personally, I, I'd like TomTom. Tom. I've got a TomTom Tom Go app, the latest version, and it is it is really, really good. Unfortunately, it only works on the little screen, which is kind of no good, really. So you can see, if I do load the phone up, what we can see, um, if I come to there, then it changes um, as we do it live on there. So on this, if I went to Apple Maps, which is there, it then launches Apple Maps on here. I can click cancel, so and go back and then go back to the home screen so it's just a quick little review of it um, one thing I found as well is over Bluetooth the sound is perfect through the iPhone cable it will work for about 20 minutes and then the, the audio will start to become um, slightly distorted which is not that great and I end up having to pull the plug out and then reconnect it um, and, and generally it's it's kind of not that good I think once we can introduce more stuff, um, more apps in here, I mean, currently we're running what, four, five, four, five, six, seven apps out of my probably 50, 60 apps on my uh, on my phone, then, then we'll be good. I think also it needs to launch quicker. It, it's kind of annoying. So it's a good first start, but it's not really what I expected it to be. And if we compare that to the standard navigation, you know, which is kind of not too bad to use, um, it just looks a little bit dated, doesn't it? It looks like that first gen leaf that came out in sort of 2011. Things haven't changed massively here, and I think CarPlay would be really good because it gives it that fresh new look, and it can be um, it can be updated a lot. Really looking forward to ZapMap coming out because of course ZapMap contains all the um, charging points, so they're bringing their navigation side of that um, onto iOS. I think it's currently out for Android. Um, so if that was to be integrated into into CarPlay, I think that'd be really really good. So first things, Tom Tom, hurry up and pull your finger out and let's get that done. And it'd be great if we can use that map as well, especially for a, for an electric vehicle. So then, in summary, the connection's pretty good. Um, it, it's easy to use, it's easy to navigate. Uh, unfortunately, the sound quality doesn't stay. It really gets distorted. That's not so good. Um, and you can only use Apple Maps. Hopefully it would be a lot better with Android, um, but you know, so many people now have got iPhone, um, you, know, you can see which way things are going from that perspective. So like, subscribe, uh, and if you enjoy the video, uh, our next video, this is only our first one on the YouTube channel. The next one is gonna be looking at Nissan's ProPilot. Um, I've got a few bugbears with ProPilot. It, it works well, um, uh, but I'm gonna be coming onto the video a little bit looking at if I drive, what's it like? Um, if both of us drive, because that's essentially what ProPilot is, it's about a, an assistance section. Um, but the next video is going to show you a small hack, in which case we're going to let ProPilot have a go on its own. Um, and we're going to do at least 10 or 15 miles, hopefully without touching the steering wheel. So 
look out for that one. Click like, click subscribe, and we will see you on the next video. If you've got any questions, please post them in the comments below, and I'll do my best to answer them. See you later.